Welcome to Girl Talk with your girl, Melissa. And we have Girl Talk tonight with the boys. We are excited to talk about our topic tonight. Oh, what is the definition of good sex? I want to hear it from the fellas. But first, before we get started, I want the fellas to introduce themselves. We are short one crew member tonight, but we're going to roll on. On my right, we got... We got Michael out of hot, hot Atlanta. I'm glad to be here, and uh, let's get it going. All right, and next on the docket. My name is Roosevelt. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Roosevelt. Pleasure to see you here. It's your boy with the big guns. Hey, <laughs> uh, tonight, a.k.a. Kai Fire, a.k.a. Kai Can't Cook. Coming at you live all the way from hot Atlanta, baby. All right, and K. Diddy tonight, huh? Yeah, I had to switch K it up. Diddy. One. I had to switch, gotta keep Diddy. them guessing. It's a different, it's a different topic tonight, so I had to change the whole name up. The name and the game, baby. The name and the game. <laughs> well, before we get into our hot topic, which I know all the women are gonna be glued to the screen, listening on all of our podcast channels, whether that's Amazon, Audible, Google, or Apple. They're going to all be listening to what we have to say tonight. But I think, you know, for we have we've seen a lot of things happening in current events. Um, and what one of the conversations that we were having as a group prior to having this conversation was what are the social impacts that we're seeing out there? Like, you know, gas is expensive. Roosevelt said bacon is ten dollars a package. I saw butter, six bucks for um, a daggone package of non-name brand butter. Um, who can afford that? What do you guys think is the, the what's going on? Prophecy, man. We're in the book of Revelations right now, I believe. Mm, I've heard several people say that, but then God say you don't know the, na- the day nor the hour. I'm not talking about the return. I'm talking about just the prophetic utterings that happened in that book about mm-hmm. prices going up and wars and rumors of wars you know yep. weather weather the climate change all that sh- stuff can't be talking biblical and then use the word sh- <laughs> <laughs> just don't go together <laughs> yeah anybody I mean, else would you it's, it's yeah. um a lot of things are being said that's tough on again tough on people um it's uh, the things are changing, and the good thing, the crazy thing is, we got to start adapting to change. Um, the way that uh, the way that people are moving from larger cities into smaller cities, and um, things are just changing. And uh, probably the biggest thing about it is the whole entire atmosphere has got to be adaptation. The status quo is not going to make it anymore. Doing things no. the way you did it five years ago is not going to make it anymore. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> And I, I think it's I think it's terrible, um, you know, some of the prices that have shot up so high that it's actually, um, you know, put people at a disadvantage for anywhere from gas to food. I think it's kind of crazy and housing. Um, you know, all I can say is, you know, this this didn't start with, you know, one event. Definitely the COVID is is probably where most of this began. But um, try to use. Um, these times of, of of downtime, if you will, even though it's not pleasant, those that can work from home, um, those that are, you know, um, God forbid, but in between jobs, try to tr- try to use the time in between to pick up some new skill sets that are very relevant to um, things we need today. And, yeah, um, I've seen That's a lot of people. Who, uh, mm-hmm, I, I've seen a lot of people took avan- take advantage of the time and actually start some pretty successful businesses. So. I think that's one thing, um, but I heard someone say once before, and 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 I, I really kind of believe this. Whether it's physical change, whether it's growing your knowledge, um, you should be a different person than than when COVID started. You could, on the other side of it, you you should have gained something, and you know, hopefully for a positive for sure. I started a podcast. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, joined- but a lot of a lot of people what uh, this has exposed certain things that they were able to hide prior to the pandemic you know we had travel 
we had going out, we had all kinds of stuff that we were doing and all that shit got taken away. So now you're forced to live with you. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. began to get exposed around, do I love me and can I live with myself? And a lot Damn. of people quickly found out that they couldn't live with themselves because they didn't have anything to hide behind. That's an so, interesting point. Th mm -hmm. that's, that's actually really interesting because you, th you think about it. I mean, divorce is up tremendously simply for the fact that the things that you were able to um, kind of sweep under the rug are now in your face. You know, some of the mm -hmm. things that you said, hey, I don't know, this is not a big deal. When you're around it all the time, it is a big deal. And then the, mm -hmm. the good thing about it is, is just that um, this is an opportunity, like Mike said, this is an opportunity to change who you are to, for the better. Because usually, because people don't understand, like right now is a time where people, because um, like during the Great Recession, the, the Great Depression, when everyone, when people are jumping out of windows and everything else, there were more millionaires created at that time than any other time in America. One of the worst financial crackdowns. And um, people, some people decided, hey, I'm gonna change the game. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change mm -hmm. the way things are going. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna disrupt this, this uh, economy. I'm gonna disrupt this skill set. Um, there's so many different things that you can do to better yourself. Like, like, like there are some people who are learning how to use computers who never used computers before. Learning how to integrate their phone into their business streamlining their business um, learning about because everyone used to be used to advertise on Facebook the way they've changed the way Facebook markets Apple is not um, giving Facebook full access to all their Apple people so now TikTok so TikTok is actually blowing up podcasts are blowing yeah. up um, Spotify is blowing up there's so many different avenues that people are learning how to cope and now people yeah. are learning to work from home it's an opportunity to grow. Hmm. When I, you know, I said I started a podcast. I started a podcast. I started an online website. I wrote a book during the COVID um, era. Nice. But what are some of the things that you guys have done during that time period where you kind of got closer to yourself? So I've done uh, a couple of things. Um, well, so let me start with this. During COVID, I had a, a job change that was... Um, Kind of unpredicted, but it was a blessing actually how it happened and how the transition just took place. Um, just as one company was downsizing, I got a call a week before I found out any of this to um, start interviewing um, for a new job that has just been a total blessing altogether from the technology to the type for to the um, types of people and teams that I was working with. Um, to, you know, just everything, including, uh, including um, you know, salary. But along with that, um, you know, there were some not so good things that happened um, to me during that time too, you know. The, um, yeah, I went through a divorce uh, and that kind of forced some change too. Um, I kind of felt like my whole mindset caused me to do a reboot, not just on not just on my mind, though, my body too. So I started working out again. Um, I lost a total of 37 pounds. Wow. So wow. That's, and then um, actually, uh, so I had started an invention process uh, a, a few years ago or a year, a year prior, I started um, with all, all the different um, things that, that are involved with, uh, you know, taking an idea to um, bringing it to fruition, basically. So, um, in 2020, um, I actually started patenting, start the patent process for one of my inventions that I've come up with. So, uh, a few, few good things came out of it. Uh, yeah. I think you guys mentioned that before in one of our episodes, the patents that you have. All good stuff. Good stuff from, you know, genius you know thinking of some of those things but not letting the pandemic get you down you did some amazing things during that any anybody else um, well the pandemic did you know get me down a little bit in, in the beginning because the go from li listen to this folks get down but so, not keep you down right well let me let me hear me out because so, we don't i don't want to sugarcoat this to where oh we got to we got to capitalize and change 
And we, we got to look at the reality of this shit in its entirety. You know, there's the change part on the other side that's great and good and the patents and everything else, but there's also shit that people go through to get to that side. And so I'm going to yeah. talk about that piece. And so that piece for me was going from three weeks out of the month, I'm on the road to being at home every single day where my home was the gym. My home was the club. My home was the bar. My home was the restaurant. My home was the movie theater. All of that was taken away outdoors. And now I'm in the house doing all that. So that should have had an impact on me. You know, I had to get adjusted to it. And in that process, now let's talk about the other side. In that process of being by myself a lot, I quickly realized that, you know what, Kyrie, you love yourself. I love me. And the man that I look at in the mirror, I love him. And I actually enjoy being with him. And it got to the point to where I started enjoying the solitude as opposed to looking at it as something negative. Because I realized that I love myself, I love being with myself, and I started enjoying being with myself. That's dope. Dope. That's dope. You got some guns too. Looks like you got some guns during yeah, that I got, time. Yeah, I put on my Schmedium shirt tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't out. Yeah, I put it on. I put it on. You know what I put? You know, I, I put it on. I was like, you know, I'm gonna roll with it. No. I'm gonna roll I didn't with see it. that. I wasn't talking about the Schmedium. I was talking about your guns for real. Your arm, your muscles. No. <laughs> I didn't even look at a Schmedium. I mean, for me, it was a little bit different when COVID happened. Um, I'm self-employed, and I'm, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. So what happened was the state started had a had a curfew, so you had to be home by like three o'clock, and and no patients were coming out in the beginning. So what I did is um I started to realize I said hey, I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to eat. So wow. What, so what I started doing was, um, the good thing about it is um I just started looking and doing going into other avenues. So I started doing some. Uh, I started working with other practices, and then more importantly. I start. I went into real estate. I was like, um, I had had a couple of houses. So in the downtime, that technically I couldn't see nobody. I started studying, reading, looking up tax code for real estate, looking at different, um, doing different things, and I just started buying real estate. And I, and I bought, wow. and I bought a, quite a few properties. I started learning how to, for lack of a better term, how to game rolls, all the different tax strategies that go along with it, and um, I just started buying houses, and. Um, I started buying them and I built and I built up a nice portfolio. I mean, I bought a lot of houses during the pandemic. And the good thing about it was um, people weren't sure what they were doing. Some people just wanted to leave their house. And um, some people were just like, hey, some people were panicking and just selling their houses, which was fine because I was buying. So I bought all the houses. Um, I figured out how to buy houses, you know, with, with little to no, no money down. And then before you know it, I, I had, had a sizable portfolio. And then I started putting renters in. And then I started to relax because I started to get passive income. And once I was able to do that, it just made everything. I just, I could ride out COVID because my mortgage was paid, my bills were paid and I was good. And then when my practice started to come back, I was still good because I was still getting my passive income. But for a couple, for a couple months, during when, when March, when that April period came around, um, I was a little nervous because mm -hmm. I didn't have a check coming in. Um, you know, I couldn't see nobody, so I wasn't going to be able to make an income. So yeah. I was just on the sidelines waiting to get in. So see, that's the shit people need to hear, though. They, we don't, yeah. I don't, we don't need to just hear, oh, I, I built a, you know, a real estate portfolio and everything was shiny and bright. No, at first you were like, shit, I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, you know the funny thing know, about it, the funny thing about it is, is like a lot of times you don't like, you don't even know what you're doing. And then I'm standing there. So I said, hey, I started watching the YouTube videos. I went and ordered some books off Amazon. I read it. I went and got, I went and got the tax code book for real estate. <laughs> tax, what is it? Dummies for real estate? I have a lot of fitness. And Survival I started reading. I started looking at that stuff. And I was like, okay, boom. Mm -hmm. I started buying house, buying house, buying house, buying house. And then before you know it, and the houses were cheap. I mean, not What's anymore. the name of the book? Dummies for real estate? Something like that. It was something. It was something like that. I didn't know that existed. That's what I was. I'm mean, I mean, I mean, I mean a little facetious, but yeah, they I got a book. They got a book for dummies for everything. Yeah, yeah. but the yeah. thing is, uh, yeah. I probably I probably read like eight or nine books <laughs> about taxes, real estate, doing this, doing that, um, doing the math of it, looking at the properties, evaluating them, um, you know, 
But like a lot of times, like a, like a Mike, Mike, Mike said, we got to make ourselves better. I mean, there's a lot of times, I mean, I forgot a lot of math, but when I started doing all the real estate and looking at the numbers and doing comps, I started doing the mathematics of it. And I was like, you know what? I can do this. So, I mean, you're forced. When you're forced, when your back's against the wall, and you're like, hey, That's I mean, you got, you got two you options, out. eat or not eat. And um, I'm a big guy, so I like to eat. Yeah. So and I think a, another good part is like, you don't keep that information to yourself. It's more when we talk about lift as you climb, you're willing to teach other people how to do it. So um, hats off to you for that, for just, you know, telling people this is how I did it. And like Kai said, you know, it wasn't all rosy for any of us. I think for me, I was consistently in therapy. Um, so it wasn't as bad mentally for me, but there were times obviously but yeah. um and i'm like I'm, I'm a homebody and kai knows this too but you know i i'm not the person that goes out anyway yeah. but even for me i was like okay now i want to go somewhere but you know i think it's been a struggle for all of us so i think all of you for sharing your stories but let's get to the topic at hand here mm. <laughs> <laughs> who gonna sing it with me i said all right, you know so let me tee like, it up. Let me tee it up. It sounds like a soundtrack let for a Let me tee it up for you. You never mm. heard that song? I'm joking, you man. Yeah, you, quest? I'm joking, on, man. Relax. You know. Oh, come on. All right, so let me tee it up for you. So I have, you know, obviously women have conversations, but I've always heard for years where women are saying you know they have the good good and that's why this man stays or this is why he keeps coming back i don't necessarily buy into that but i always wanted to understand from a, a male perspective is that true what what is the definition of good sex what does that mean when you say somebody has you know, the sex was good. What what does that even mean? And does it make you come back and back and back? And as even if they're assholes and you you continuously come back, I don't think that's what it is. I think there's some type of connection. You know and what? I'll stop, well, but that's, that's how I'm teeing it up. Back to my asshole. I'm, I, I, I sure am not doing that. You know what? But, uh... I, I mean, I'll kick it off. Um, everyone always thinks, every woman thinks that their stuff is the best. But the reality of it is, it has nothing. I'm going to be, a, I'm going to give a grown man answer. It's about the connection you have before you have sex. Because a lot of times, if mm -hmm. a girl has got, she's got a, she's got positive energy, she's got a good attitude, um, she speaks well, you converse, you connect with her on a personal level. That's what makes the sex good. I mean, she can be, I mean, she could do all the backflips and all that other stuff. If you're not feeling her like that, it really doesn't matter. Well, there it is. Who else feel like that? No, I, I agree with that. I, I, I think that the connection does make it, you know, put it to another level. Um, as men, um, of course, we are more um, visual than, than, than females are. Um, I'll say what would make it good for me. There is um, the, 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 the excitement makes it a little, a, little, a little softer down there. So I'll say that for sure. Um, but oh, well, well, um, well, 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 make what softer? I go on Alexa listening. Alexa wanted well, <laughs> Alexa <laughs> wanted to know too. Kai right. said, "What yeah, makes yeah. it?" Alexa like, huh? was like, "What? Yeah, what's right. soft? What do you mean? What's soft? What, what do you mean? What's soft down there? I'm juicy, juicy. Let's use the word. Juicy. Oh, juice. So you talk about the juice? Okay." Mm -hmm. I think you talked about Mr. So, Johnson. So what about like, you know, if someone brings excitement, are you more apt to come back? Like whips and chains and whipped cream and cough drops. Well, I mean, I mean, you got to come back for that. You know, lie. You know whoever, whoever, you know, whatever you're into, but you definitely don't want somebody who just just lays there to particip the uh, participation. <laughs> you want that. <laughs> But you do. You you want somebody who is, isn't just right there. So <laughs> just like this. <laughs> right, right, right. 
but <laughs> counting the popcorn. Are you done in the yet? Seat? You, Michael, are you done yet, Michael? Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Nine o'clock, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 9 o'clock, shit. <laughs> Michael, hurry oh. up. My popcorn's almost done. <laughs> right. right. Clowns. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. Oh, Don't let them distract you from your answer. Right. Go ahead. No, but, you know, that's that's it. Um, that and the fact that, I don't know, they, you know, all that chemistry, that, that all um, plays a part. And as far as um, women thinking that, you know, a man isn't going to go anywhere just because they think that it's, it's that good. You know, it's going to be more, it, it takes more than that. Um, if, you, if you don't have a bigger connection than that, um, there's got to be a level of respect for a man to really continue to seek out um, that woman. There's there's obviously something, something else there. Uh, so if the sex isn't, um, if it's boring, like you said, the person just laid there and... and um, they don't you and you don't come back like women are not as kind i don't think well if they just lay there I mean, you, you could care less how kind they are yeah. you, no no i said women aren't as kind as you just said you are like you're saying there's a connection and there's all of these things but in some women's mind if you're not able to perform they're not necessarily coming back well, i think it's a total the women package. themselves yeah, I don't think Mike was saying that they can, as long as you have a connection, they can just lay there. I, I, I you know, for me, I, I, and I believe, and I know Mike, we've been friends for 30 years, and I mm. Roosevelt too. So, you know, that it's, it's a total package. It's a yeah. package deal. But listen, cause we, we, these brothers giving grown man answers right now. Mm. You know, <laughs> and, you know, with, you know I'm 50, I'm 50, Roosevelt 50, Mike 47, 48. They giving those mm. years. But I remember the days where me and my boys would get up and we'd be like, yo, what are we doing today? We going girl hunting. That's what we call there in New York. We going girl hunting. So yeah, mm. so when you and, and so it's 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 phases, you know, back in high school, yeah. you know, growing up and shit. Yeah, you know, you you wanted that. You yo, yo, you, did you did you get it? Hell yeah, right. I got it. How how was it? And then you right. went on a tell But what it. is that how was it? Okay. Well, we you know what? But you know what? But you know what? If you want to we'll get down and dirty, we used to call it sport fucking. And what happened was you go out there, you meet them, and you just see how freaky they get. And the freakier they got, the better it was. You know? And you just, gotcha. I mean, you, you just be getting in there, just getting it. And after a so while. So that's what you mean when you're asking how, what, when your boys are asking you, how was it? How freaky she got. Because if she was. Yeah, how what? Because mm -hmm. she was she's, she's down to do all this stuff. Guess what happened? Hey, Mike, she did all this. She did all this. Mike's thinking, I think I want to try her out, too. I mean, really? No, he ain't thinking that. No, no, I'm not saying <laughs> Mike is. I'm not saying Mike is. I'm just saying one of your boys would be like thinking, man, she's all she know about that. Because that's how that's how guys well, sleep with another the same well, guy's friend, girlfriend. Those, those are them grimy dudes. But that's man. but for no, but, women, that is a that you that's girl code. You don't do that. Oh no! no well, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, I, no, I, no, heard, no. I heard. I heard. <laughs> yes, well, it is. Yeah, I, I agree with Doc on that. That that may be a, a spoken code, but that's not. They don't always just act on that. I, no, I, that's not real. But but men don't either. And I, I want to say I, I do want to address that. I think that is a, a spoken code against, uh, not against, but with everyone that, you know, with someone you definitely are really interested in, you don't go in, you know, great detail on that part of your connection or relationship with that because people will be curious about what it's like with them. And I don't, I don't think that's specific to a man or a woman, but I know plenty of women who would get down with the get down you know, it doesn't, it, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, depending cold. on the relationship with the woman, yeah. you know, you're not going to talk about that woman like that anyway with your boys. Right. That's right. You, know, you might, you might say something like, oh yeah, you know, we, we played around. We had a good time last night, but you're not going to get into mm -hmm. detail if you feel on that woman. Uh, like, I'm, I'm real mad. won't do that shit. Well, it's right. not, okay. I mean, you because, because, because it comes to me finish one thing because there's, there's a level of respect that you have for that woman that you wouldn't put right. her out there like that to your boys. Yeah. I mean, if you're cool with your friends like that, I mean, I have some friends from high school I played ball with. I mean, we were real tight. It was just unspoken. If, he, if this guy dated this girl, the rest of no one, no, no one else touched her. Even if they had the worst breakup in the free world, no one else touched her. 
is just, you know, you just don't play in that sandbox. There's so many other sandboxes to play in. You go play in that one. It's just like, you don't go, I mean, it's just unwritten. You just don't go, right? You don't, you don't go in after your boy. It just, if you're cool like that, and I don't care how, how great it is, it's just that no one ever does that. I mean, none of my friends have done that. Well, you said it was a, was it a cold dip just then, just a few seconds ago. I know, but some girls, some girls, I mean, they just, I mean. They... So you're saying there's no code for women, but there is a code for men? No, not code That's for men. Lot. No, I'm just saying, for like, like if, you, if you're cool with your friends, if you're, you're like, like, like our group, no one would ever date any of the girls that someone date. It's just, I'm not saying with all guys. I'm saying with the guys I know. The guys I'm but friends with. But that's what I was talking about. Because when you when you first dis, when you first talked about it, you said, um, Mike, you gave the example of Mike, but not Mike, you know, saying, hey, you should try her too. But you're friends, right? No, it's, you know, there's different levels yeah. of friends. There's different levels of friends. Like, I mean, I played football in high school and I played football in college. Now, there's a group of guys you're cool with. That's your group. Now, there's other guys you're friends with on the team. That's a larger periphery. Those guys, those guys might do it, but the guy, the five or six guys that I was really cool with, they would never do that. So you got your close group of friends and you got your periphery of your friends. And that's just, that's just the fact what it is. We have a close group. No one in our close group would do that, but some of the dudes in the periphery, they would. Oh, I, so that I agree with it as for, for women. Yeah. If they're not close to you, it's, it's open season. Yeah, yeah but, but, you, think, but, but you, still, you still know the guy. You can still know the guy, you know, because because uh, there have been but guys. We still, we still we still haven't even defined what is good sex. Yeah, because go ahead. You, define. You, can, you can you can have a connection with somebody, and the sex not be good. So what does it mean to have good sex? Why don't you tell us then? I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you. <laughs> Spit it. You got you got to be you got to look you got to be open minded. You gotta be you open got, You gotta got know how to ride it. You gotta ride that thing like a damn mechanical bull. You gotta be interested in it. Some some women don't even have a, a drive. I mean, your your drive gotta match my drive. Your freaky gotta match my freaky. Um No, I th I think Y'all get sugar coated ass questions to begin with and now y'all getting into the details I'll at the end you. so what is it that defines it my my whole thing is when you see mr happy don't act like don't act like he's a, like, like you've never seen him before and don't don't act like he's a like he's gonna eat you up should women be aggressive and like when you come through that's, the door yeah yeah i think that's important that shit's important man yeah, that shit's important i mean try mm -hmm. shit do shit without me having to ask you. yeah yeah you know do shit like with that or, and ask what do you want me to do tonight? Say do you what? Like this? You be, be a, you be say what? You understand? Yeah. What do you want me to do tonight for you, baby? Yeah. And it, 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 it goes both ways. If I'm throwing it, I need you to be throwing it back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Mike said, I don't want to be doing all the work. I need you to be participate. Okay, it's a team be effort. Like, be like, ah, uh -huh, you know what? Turn it over. I'm getting on top. Mm -hmm. So that my, makes you come it's back? My, it's my turn. Well, I'm not saying it's going to make me come back. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's gonna make me come back now, but I'm just Mike saying. Mike almost spit out his drink. What's <laughs> 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 the original question? No, we're we defining, we're defining what is what is good sex, right? But it doesn't mean it's gonna make you come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to add the unsugarcoated version? Yeah. I think that, that for me, that's uh, uh, participation. Be be willing to try, um, you know, some new things, and shoot, bring bring your excitement. Uh, you know, I think I do think the connection comes along with that, but bring that and, you know, yeah. So if they bring a bottle and a trench coat, that excite that's excitement. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. You sure, I'm not gonna ding, ding, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You know what that? You know what? Believe it or not, there's someone. Hold on, Doc. There's someone at your front door. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, you that, 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 that shit is kind of hot. That is. That is hot. That is. You you come you come come to my house with a trench coat on. We we gonna get it in in the garage. I mean, you, so. get, you, you come in you come in with your heels, your trench coat. We're ready to roll. Yeah. In a bottle, right? 
You don't need no bottle. You don't need yeah. no bottle. You the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm pop. I'm pop bottles tonight, baby. <laughs> and some cough drops in your pocket. So let me ask you this, Melissa. Can I ask you a question? Sure. As the, uh, as the first girl as talk a, with the boys. As, yes, as first, absolutely. As the first lady of the show. A girl talk with the boys is our right, show. So, so I've heard women say that you know they do that. Like the, you know, if the if the if the if the Johnson is good, they'll they'll get pistol whipped, and you know what I mean by pistol whipped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Okay, and so the relation the, the dude can be a jerk, asshole, ass white, hippopotamus, down. But as yes. long as he pistol whipping you, you good. Yes. Damn. Yep. Why is that though? I don't. I don't know. Because it rings their bell. I get, yeah. I mean, it's you it was good. I mean, probably for the same reasons that you said, like the excitement of it. Um, you know, just just getting that spot. Yeah. Getting that mm -hmm. spot. You know, I can, I can imagine that happens for men too. I can imagine that shit because you know I. They're like crack. Oh my! I hope my kids ain't listening to this. They will be. Daddy, Daddy, it's, no. It's on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're gonna hear. It. Daddy, no. Me. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that happening for men too. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, this. Oh my God, she get on my damn nerves, but oh my God. Right. That's Hello? what I was saying. Like. You free tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I be like, well, Mike, Mike, I can't stand her. Hello, this is tonight. <laughs> I got two bones. <laughs> it's true. I mean, oh, if, like I said, if she comes, you know, one night in a trench coat, one night in a t-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, or she brings some feathers and whips and chains and and um, handcuffs. If she can even bring her friend. You're gonna want that. You're gonna want all of that excitement over and over and over again. <laughs> You said she could bring what? <laughs> she could even bring her friend. <laughs> oh, and on that note. Okay, but there will probably be there, there will probably be something in your audience that would be like, yep, they down with that too. Right. Yeah, yeah man, probably. Like, yeah. Times have changed. Me and yeah, one of my yeah. boys talking own. about this. Yeah, because guys um, don't want to do two women at once. Because we're all men of character. And I'll leave it at that. Good. You do leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's, that's, that's not every guy's dream. Most, yeah. I don't know, but I would think when you were younger, right? Yeah, when you were younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. the younger Cause, men are thinking that way. Because you know, you know, mm -hmm. no older guy thinks like that. Yeah, younger men do, though. Shoot. He's being facetious, Melissa. Oh, older men do, too? Every guy Hell thinks yeah. that. Men think about everything. Shoot. How 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 graphic do you want to get on the show? Because I can say some shit. No, no, I mean, because if, if you want, our time is up, sir. If you want, if you want, we can make this X-rated. Because I'm telling you right now, no. there, there, there's a lot I, of things that guys do. I mean, shoot. No guy, no guy ever says no to a woman. There's no guy ever says, you know what? I don't feel like having sex with you. Even if you don't like her, he's still gonna sleep with her. Why? Because you can't Who's turn it saying, on. Mm, Mike or Kai? Kai. <laughs> that would be me. That would, that, that, that would be me. You could be mad at her. You could be broke up with her. But she gives you sex. You're like thinking, I'll stay in another week. Nah, nah. I've been mad. I've been so fed up where I don't even want to look at you. Mike? I've, I've been that. Well, l let me say a couple of things. Um, turning down... Uh, Sex from just anybody is one thing. Turning down mm -hmm. sex from someone you actually have a history with is another thing. So um, if, if you know, I meet a woman that's throwing it at me that I'm just not feeling her like that, and, yeah, I, I'll, I'll turn it down, and I have. And there will mm -hmm. be there also women that, you know, I have history with. We do have a strong, or did have, rather, have a strong history, of uh, a strong um, physical um, connection. We had lots of chemistry and mm -hmm. yeah, you still, you still be at it, but eventually 
the um you know whatever had made you so you know i don't know whatever about this woman had pissed you off so bad that you don't want anything to you know do with her um physically you know that that can <laughs> That could eventually lift, you know, lead to you guys breaking up and never dealing with each other again. I, I, I definitely had one. One woman comes to mind right now. Her, her ass was crazy as shit. So, you know, but it was good. It was good while we were together. But she quickly and often said some things or did some things that just really made me like sick and tired of her. So. So okay, got it. But here's a question most women ask. And I want to know if if you guys like this question. How many women have you slept with? Ah, uh, no. I, I, the I number like, you have the num the number you have reached <laughs> has been disconnected. You know what? <laughs> uh, I think well, I, video I, too. Are you serious? You know what? You know what? I, 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 I'll take a I'll, I'll take a quote from my man Rick Ross. I don't I don't make love I don't I don't make love I make magic. So the ones where I'm, I'm, I'll talk about the ones I made magic with. How about that? That ain't answering the question. That means you straight up lying. Yeah, that don't even make sense. Well, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna give up my body count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 self incrimination right there, right? <laughs> Come listen, on, man. Let's try to. Man, I thought this was good. This is gonna be girl. This will be the last episode of Girl <laughs> Talk with the Boys. Right, right, right. Let's just right. be girl talk with Melissa Ann. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, like I'm Jack the Ripper. Make me sound like I'm Jack the Ripper. Right. Uh -uh. Roosevelt, Dexter Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Dexter so, St. John. Okay, before we close out, I want any parting words for the women out there that just think they're awesome and the men are never going to leave or they're going to continue to come back. What are the last parting words or advice to women how to sp satisfy and keep a man mm. all right so I'll, very I'll, short I'll, not long okay net it, well, out, net it, net it out michael i at least said uh, answer one of them the ones that think it's so good that ain't nobody gonna leave there's always some better i promise you that uh -huh. That's said, not what Roosevelt said. Roosevelt says <laughs> all the same. You hear that, folks? He said, "I promise you that." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike got a sliding scale. <laughs> Wait, he was kind of in the mic, I mean, in the camera, like. <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 a, like, a, like an Amazon scorecard. You got four stars, three stars. I gotta take a star back because this was better than oh that God. one. It's cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was a great answer right there, bro. I was like, shut up for the smoke. I guarantee you, there's better. <laughs> Man, you think you're killing oh, it? Mike. There's someone that's got to kill it even more. <laughs> but that's not what Roosevelt said. He said it was all the same. Uh, Mike. That ain't my belief. That's not all the same. Like I, like I said, going back to the connection, that, that, that's what's good for me. When it, when you both feeling it. I mean, there, there's that, you can get that, that wild good stuff but it's it's good to have that wild good stuff with someone you actually connect with. connected with if, yeah. Yeah. So, with the advice if, i would give Melissa, is you know women better look at the age group you're dealing with and the maturity true, and the age group you're dealing with and the maturity level because now we're starting yeah. to see the 20 year olds and the 30 year olds are dating the 50 and it's vice versa so mm -hmm. you know that's you know the, the what was that song age ain't nothing but a number mm-hmm it's more than a number, baby. Word. Word, Melissa? Can I get a virtual Word. fist bump? Bump my, bump, hey, bump my fist, Melissa. Boom. Yeah, it looked like What's you up? punched him in the face. I know she did. <laughs> I should have been like, should have did the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Roosevelt, what you got to say? What's your last word? You know, I don't agree with Mike and the rest of the crew. Your connection is important, you know? That is probably the biggest thing. 
Because if you just if the guy's in there just for sex, sooner or later he's gonna get tired of the sex. Yeah. Oh, sure. that's good. That's a bomb right there. We're that gonna end on that. That was have. some good stuff. Connection. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're connected to the right person. Make sure you're interesting. Make sure you got a brain. You can have conversation. That makes for for the full package. So don't believe the hype. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. I really enjoyed the conversation and I hope you do too. And we will be back again in two weeks recording our next episode. So I want to talk about what do you guys think about tattoos and tongue rings and nose rings and all of that stuff um, as far as an appearance on a, on a woman, um, perhaps my age. Younger women do it, but perhaps, you know, in your age and, and my age. So I'd love to have that topic of, um, on our next conversation. But okay. thanks for joining us and thanks for listening in. And as always, I see you because I am you.